yo, this podcast with me and Pratik is a good one. We talk about a lot of enlightenment stuff. It's mostly me asking him questions, to be honest, but it's a good chat. Okay, guys. I uh, hope you like it. Bye. <sighs> Welcome to the Reaction Podcast. Uh, I'm here with Pratik. Mm. And we're going to watch ourselves record a podcast. Yeah. Hi, Pratik. Ooh, hey. We're recording hey. again. Um, okay. Welcome everyone to the podcast uh, with me and Pratik. Pratik is a... Um, so we, we recorded, we started recording before and then we started re-recording because there was a cat noise and yeah. But the cat shows up later, and we introduce him, and I don't want to pre-introduce him, so just letting everyone know. Mm-hmm. Spiritual guy. He does spiritual stuff. Uh, <laughs> how would you react to that statement, Pratik? Uh, I don't think uh, I would want to put that label on me as a spiritual <laughs> guy, because I don't know anything about spirituality or any such thing. You know, I must have read something long back, but you know, all that is out of my system. So, yeah, I can talk about some special things. If you throw some concepts at me, I might be able to, you know, reply and respond and talk about it. But I don't really think anything that's special about me, you know, it's totally normal. So, and I don't know about guiding. I can just talk to people as friends. I don't know. I don't, I don't think I have anything to guide people on, you know. <laughs> yeah, that, so, uh, before we get into the whole guide thing. Um, so, it's like, it's like there's like spirituality, which is like the label. And then there's spirituality, which is like, you know, and like a true, true spirituality, you know. Uh, which is like I know what you could say like the concepts are pointing to like mm, how would you feel about that sort of idea uh, I'm not sure about that because I've never experienced the spirit so I have no idea about what spirituality means you know yeah uh, somebody told me transcending the limitations of the physical means spirituality but I haven't transcended a damn thing so I don't know what that means so uh, the whole idea of like anything like other than what's like exactly happening now is just like not not agreeable. Yeah, all I know basically is what is happening right now, and I can't really talk about my past. I have no memories, you know. If you ask me uh, something about some incident, the memory may come up to serve the purpose of talking about it. But as of right now, I have no memories. So even the word spirituality is just a word. It doesn't uh, conjure up any images or things in my head. It's just any any other word, you know. If you put the meaning inside the word, maybe I can talk about the meaning you put me, but uh, put to me. But the word itself has no significance to me. And all we live, all we do is live live in the world of words. So the words is what uh, is what creating the reality. Now the reality creates the words. The words create the reality. That's what the shift happens, and that's what the people need to real- realize that uh, the concepts you use are coloring your reality, and it is actually creating it. And without the concepts, there's actually no reality. The reality itself is a concept. So once all concepts are gone, then you cannot talk about anything. You cannot even say uh, reality exists or not exists or whatever it is. But yes, yeah, it's uh, convenient for people to talk about things. Obviously, I'm not denying that any 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 of that any of those things. But uh, I don't know. I, I always react against that for some reason. For some reason, because uh, what I I think that something profound is happening uh, to some people and putting it into a label like that is forcing the people also to speak about it in those terms and is doing a different. Oh, you're covering it, mate. Covering it, mate. Oh, sorry. I'm saying this waking up thing is the whole world is waking up. All domains of human system is waking up, you know. So it's not related to one domain. So uh, if a politician wakes up, then something else will happen. If a media wakes up, if an actor wakes up, something else different, different happens. And the expressions are unique. They will not use spirituality. They will uh, apply what they have woken up to in their own field of work. The politician can also use that. It will be the most... Uh, appropriate thing in the world to happen right now for people in power to wake up you know that's what's needed so yeah i don't know and the word itself because people who are into spirituality is good for them but there are the people uh, other people who are spiritual but the word itself brings out connotations which they uh, go away from so even that is a problem you know so cool. i did say guy so I'm, I'm... <laughs> yeah. so yeah we're on the same page um Whenever I say guy, everyone always misteres me. I, I, like I say, oh, I say. I, and I, I heard you said guy. Whenever, I, I, whenever I, I, I say, it, uh, people think I say gay. <laughs> I was talking to my partner for a long time. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, uh, this this guy. I would say this guy like that. This guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and mm-hmm. she was like, one time she came me, she was like, I don't like it when you keep saying like things are gay. Like, That's not cool. <laughs> I was like, no, I, I don't. I don't do that. And she was like, you say it all the time. Like no, I said this guy. So yeah, maybe I just say guy in like a 
it, it, something with, with the audio. It just nobody. Um, yeah, yeah it has like a sort of an accent over there that's like between you know, the masks. What are you trying to say? Bro, hold on one sec. I used to say, hey guys. Uh, uh, I used to say, hey guys, at the start of like all my videos. And everyone was like, oh, hey guys. Ha ha ha. He's saying he's saying he's not a spiritual guy, but uh, you're also saying there's nothing there's nothing in your system or something like that. What does that mean? Like there's nothing in your system. Uh there's like no concepts. I mean, I can use concepts. I was really into concepts and about the spiritual stuff long back, like you know, two three years ago. Uh, but it was just like a tool that I used to. What, what's the, what's the difference between you using using concepts and like the other thing? Uh. Concepts, you people develop concepts for the purpose of using them to achieve a certain goal. That you create a concept that you will tell people, or you'll use that concept to better utilize yourself or make yourself more efficient. So, for me, the concepts get created for the purpose of communica- communication, but I will never use that concept and put it in my head and carry it forward. The concepts get created and destroyed in that moment, but other people are conceptual. They Everything about uh, the viewing is conceptual, so the concepts are what lives on. But for me, the concepts get created and destroyed in the moment. I it's myself is a concept, you know. So uh, it's only birth and death all the time. Even the concept birth and above uh, is born and dies. So each concept is a set of two. All of your concepts in your head is uh, each each of them create one particular view of reality, and that is your sense of self. Each of the concepts have a sense of self. So yeah. Cool. Yeah. To dissect and decipher my experience at that time, and the tools have no purpose now. So yeah. It's all, uh, it's all the past, you know. Past is not alive. It's not gonna help anybody. You're going from like, uh, so you went, you had like a journey where you went from, mm, like having having things to like not having things. <laughs> uh, I would not even say that, you know. Uh, the whole life you keep taking in things and giving it out, but it's not that uh, you you can never really possess anything, you know. It's just uh, some stuff that you do during the time that suits, suits you and you know so that time is past i think but so uh, uh as soon as i asked that question i saw in the reaction you like shook your head a little bit and what was your yeah, reaction that was, to awkward, it? That, was a, that was an awkward answer because I, I did not know how to uh tackle that question if there's a because the whole thing they had so many complex concepts in it like journey and uh you had things and had not things it gets, gets hard for me to answer questions which uh have an assumption of a shift, of a paradigm shift where it happens in time that things change after that. For me, in my experience, it's not really that way. Everything is very fluid. There's no such thing as uh, things change, you know, or there was something was before and something was after. So I do not know how to answer that question. But I, uh, I didn't pause. So I just went on with it. And you know, I took it. I probably, you know, made a mess of the answer. <laughs> I don't know. I thought it was like, a, a pretty good answer. Uh, uh. Yeah, that's... that's... That's interesting though. It's like so it's like anything anything in time, it's like it doesn't it doesn't really compute. It's like no, that doesn't make any fucking sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And all my memories, like even if I have to ask uh, anything, I'll just ask my girlfriend, like, what did we do? Or you know, what do I like and stuff like that. Like sometimes if I uh Yeah, yeah. It's just like the pa- uh I don't know, I can't really can't think back, you know. I just can't think back or even forward. I just can't I have no, I don't even know what people mean by, do you remember that? Like, what function do you use in your head that do you remember that? You know, it's just an automatic thing that comes up. If it doesn't come up, it doesn't come up. So you have no control. I have no control over that. And you only remember things which have an emotional charge or attachment or your sense of self is still attached or involved in those things. So once it's dissolved from that, it becomes very hard for uh, you to get those memories back. It's like it happened a lifetime ago, you know? That, that's what the feeling is. Cool. I don't know. The whole, what, spiritual what? Thing, it, the whole spiritual thing, it was just like I was going through something and the only way I had to uh, be, you know, connected to the world was through the spiritual thing because only, only those guys knew had some sort of resonance with what I was saying. But even that, even when I was resonating with that, it was not really true because they were coming in through some sort of context and the domain of spirituality, where, whereas what I was experiencing was... And what I was going through was nothing related to that. But those were the only words that was available in the human context to which I could describe to myself what was happening and to other people. So, but since I was using that spiritual term so many, so much, that had become an identity, uh, a way of you know processing and communicating things. But that identity is slowly going away because it was like a persona that, that I had taken up for a purpose. And the purpose, uh, I don't have any purpose anymore. So all those things are just, you know, washing away. Uh, 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 what? 
Do you, you, what, what did you go before I before I uh, ask a question? Do you have anything uh, extra to say say about that? It's like a, a purpose purpose going away. It's like you had a purpose. Uh, even me putting that I had no purpose. Uh, I had a purpose before. I had no purpose. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't fit fit right with me right now. Now that I see it. Uh, before it was like I did not know what purpose I had. So that was all that had an assumption that I have a purpose that I need to find something to do. I need to you know whatever be something be somebody or whatever it was. So that doubt of that uh, finding that what I need to do that went away. So now I can say for sure that there's no purpose. Because before there was some some uh, movement still going on. Key because people are telling me all the time, you know, do something, do that, do this. And even after I told them, this happened to me. They're like, okay, that that's great. Uh, talk about that, you know. So everything was supposed to be had, having a purpose. Everything that happened to you was supposed to have a purpose. And uh, I do not know, you know, there was uh, there was a uh, confusion of what I'm supposed to do, and am I supposed to do anything or not? So it's still re revolving around the I. The I want to do something or I'm not want to do something. I wanted to find a purpose, but. Now that uh, quest seems futile, not futile, but the quest has come to its end. You know, there can be no purpose. It's not that I found a purpose or not found a purpose. It just went away. That's it. Cool. Even that, even when I was resonating, but that was not really true because they were coming in through some sort of context and the domain of spirituality, where, whereas what I was experiencing was and what I was going through was nothing related to that. But those were the only words that was available in the human context to which I could describe to myself what was happening and to other people. So, but since I was using that spiritual term so many, so much that I've become an identity, uh, a way of, you know, processing and communicating things, but that identity is slowly going away because it was like a persona that, that I had taken up for a purpose and the purpose, uh, I don't have any purpose anymore. So all those things are just, you know, washing away. Uh, and even uh, the fact uh, that what, I keep saying that the identity is going away, it's what, not what? that, uh, it's, I get identified with something and at the time of identification, you're not aware that you're identified with that. So once that identification goes away, that which you've identified with is still there, but it's not, you're not connected to it. It doesn't give you your identity, you know? So that thing which I've learned and all these things are still there so that I can, it can come up whenever it's needed. But uh, I'm not deriving my sense of self from that. Before it was d derived from that, uh, sort of. Even not really, but sort of. It had uh, contaminated my sense of self, not that there was any. But, uh, hold on. No problem. Yeah. Yeah, even and I also keep I also keep using the words experiencing. So even I'm not okay with that word experiencing, you know, because uh, for me actually I don't think I experience anything at all. For me, it's very hard for me to tell myself that I, there's something called experience. You know, what do, what does that mean? Experience. The moment you say this is an experience, you've already separated yourself and put yourself in time, saying this is an experience. The present is doing the past now. So even the fact that I'm saying I'm experiencing, I don't think I can experience anything. You know, uh, you only experience stuff to, from the knowledge that you have about things. Uh, so even the word experiencing itself, I don't like it, but uh, there's no way for me to speak without the, using the word experience. But yeah, experiencing means just living. Living is what I call experiencing, living and life. There's no separation. In experiencing, there's a separation that you're experiencing something else. For me, there's no separation. Even my entire thing that's going on, there's no separation that I'm not experiencing this already. already. So it's just, uh, it's just a constant flux of movements and folding all the time happening. But I can't really say it's my experience or anybody's experience. It's a, it won't be right to say that. So it's like, um, you know, you can put it into the the concept of experiencing or like not experiencing or like a person experiencing it, or you can not do that. And then uh, it's kind of just like a, an unfolding where there's not any conceptual stuff going on. Uh, you can experience concepts, you know, you can experience conceptualization. Conceptualization is like a process of consciousness that you can experience in a way, you know, in a way. <laughs> But not really you can experience. So at the time of conceptualization, you are that conceptualization. So you cannot experience it at that at the time, but you can think back. And when you think back on it, you will have a feel that you experience something. Because thinking back always causes, causes a split. So you'll feel like, like that. But uh, yeah, I don't know. At that, at any, at a moment, at any given frame, the frame itself is independent. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I can't explain. There's nothing to explain, really. I'm just saying that, uh, I'm just saying what I'm using, I'm just negating all the time what I'm saying, even experiencing, because I have no words, you know, whatever I say, I have to negate again and again, because it provides some sort of a weird thing, I don't know, maybe just my, you know, uh, weird thing, but. Yeah, uh, uh, it's like negate, negating everything that comes up, and then you end up at like, uh, mm, you know, the source or whatever, would you say that? Mm. Yeah, but I also, I don't negate with the purpose of doing something. This thing is negating automatically, because the moment I see something, it's no, no, no longer true in the next frame. The next frame itself, the next frame of my experience itself negates what I just said. So again and again, it's constantly negating, not with the purpose of getting somewhere. It's just negating all the time, because the moment something is said, it's not true. Really, it's not true. So fact, actually, in fact, and this is a truth-checking machine. Once it's uh, activated, it's a truth-checking machine. So it's 
shoots down anything of the past it shoots down all thoughts and then it doesn't shoot down like uh, disorderly it explains why beautiful uh, uh see what i did the question so, i had uh, uh what you, you, what what did you go through like what have you been through yeah uh-huh. Because you're like, I know, uh, I, got, I went I through this really stuff. Talk, like, and then, about, yeah. No, I don't even really like talking about the past. Yeah. That's why uh, this uh, we bought this up from a, on from a wrong place. In talking about the past, I can talk about the past from this perspective. So anything I say about the past is irrelevant because it's it's a guess on my part. So so whatever I know about my past is the same thing as you do. You know, I can only guess about my past, and I can't really remember. It's like if I look back and think it was like it's happened to somebody else. It's like I'm viewing a movie, so that some uh, that happened to somebody else. You know. It just like there's no connection at all, so I can't really say I can't really make up a story. And any anything that I can tell you about the past is just connecting separate events and making up a story from that. But each each event is an independent frame. You can't really connect. It's all a causal. So I can't really make up a story and tell you what is happening in the past and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, yeah. Not feeling, not feeling the story right now. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, 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 like when it comes to like, so you're just like not inclined to create a story unless it's like appropriate to the situation or something. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So no, there there'll be like stories. Like if I'm talking to my talking to my friend and uh, he'd be like, "Oh, bro, remember that time?" And immediately, because he's giving me the uh, emotional energetic input for my brain to come conjure that story up, so it'll come up. You know, uh, not that I will not. Uh, I'll be like, "Oh, it's in the past. I'm not gonna talk about it." You know, it doesn't work that way. That that's retarded. But for the purposes of the question you asked, it would not, because it's such a vague question. So I have to put my life in the context. And I make it up because I hate making up things, you know. And most of the conversation is making up things. You ask the question, I make it up on the spot. I hate making up things, so I'll just uh, give my reasoning for not making up things. That's the better way for me to talk because I don't want to fake myself or you know whatever it is. Cool. Yeah. So, like, what do you what do you get up to day to day? What's your like day to day experience like? Well, it's pretty normal, pretty simple, pretty chill. I wake up. I mean, I have nothing to do, you know. I just graduated college and I'm taking a break for a year, trying to. I don't know. I don't. I don't know what to do. You know. Uh, but I think I have a feeling now that I want to get out in the world and share myself. Although I don't really know what I have to say. But whenever I start speaking, a lot of things come out. So, and they seem to help some people. I guess I don't know. But it seems pretty fun to talk to people. And but it's uh, this thing is pretty important too to talk about these kind of things. But yeah. But my daily living is pretty pretty normal, pretty ordinary. Uh, I wake up. And there's uh, nothing for me to do, so I just do whatever just comes up, you know. I'll wake up, maybe close my eyes, uh, relax for a while, relax for a while, eat something. Each day is different. Each event is different. It's like the flow. It depends on the flow. What what the day asks of me. But I've structured my life in such a way that there's no responsibilities on me as as of this moment. You know, nothing is pressing off of me. So the whole life is pretty much open for me to do whatever I want. So I'm, I don't know what to do. It's pretty much open. So yeah, I'm just you know, chilling. More. So, uh, 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 what's the difference between that and like, mm, uh, you know, some some guy, me, me five years ago, just like playing video games all day, you know, just fucking around. Uh, uh, you know, it's like, um, mm, you sound just like mega fucking uh, lazy. Uh, so, like, what's um? But I'm guessing it's not really like that. It's not like you're, you know, what's the difference between someone who's just like mm, avoiding responsibility and like what's going on with you? Yeah. Mm. Uh, maybe I'm avoiding responsibility. I'm not sure because uh, uh, I, 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 the word responsibility is like something uh you think comes from outside you, but you become responsible. You become responsible. Your uh your way of being is responsible. So I'm responsible in each and every of my actions, but I don't have any responsibility. You know, I'm super responsible, super caring, but I don't care for anything. I'm just caring. In each of my actions, there's responsibility, but I'm not responsible for anything. Uh, it doesn't mean that I'm hiding away and stuff. I'm totally open to everything and everything I am doing. My whole body and mind is programmed and oriented in such a way that all the information I process and perceive is viewed in such a way that it will uh, benefit the world. I have no option because the world is me. I'm the world. That that is a framework that I've. Uh, it's been set up inside me. So whatever I perceive is like a. Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, it's like since there's since there's no self, sense of self here. The sense of self is the world. The world is a sense of self. You know. So everything that is oriented for for the world, so the identity li- literally is global. So what do I do? Even if I'm taking a dump, it's globally taking a dump. You know, uh, it, it won't make any sense, but that's that's how it is, and that's the feeling of it too. That each of my thoughts are affecting everybody else, and since uh, the things I think about, and sometimes there's a lot of reactions over here. So I literally have to express it out from here, speak it out, and uh, you know, put it out in the world. So I know that is having a change in the world because I'm literally each thought presses. No, no frame is no frame is independent. Everything is affecting everybody else. Everything is connected. 
so uh, i don't know i just keep living and going on my life and whatever and uh, whatever needs to be done i do it you know I talk to my parents uh, they were on the trip with me for like 2 3 years my dad totally changed you know he says this all the time silence and he would have anxiety and all the things uh, before then my mom she's been meditating for 20 years and she's also progressed a lot she didn't have any wisdom before but it was just like practice now there's wisdom with practice and then all the people out around with they've totally changed uh, i was living with eight people like for one whole year and it was like uh i was in that state of god consciousness we can call it where you find no separation between yourself and the environment but there's still an experience it so it was there and uh, it was like i was experiencing everything that i was doing for was for all the eight people and i was literally uh, tapped into the field of all all the all the eight people were tapped into the same field and whatever was happening over here they were learning from that so just my just being myself i'm affecting the world so i don't have to take any more responsibility you know i'm responsible for, for myself and that's enough beautiful yeah mostly <laughs> I know you're you're getting the you're getting the inclination to like uh hang out with people and and talk talk at them. Or... <laughs> no, I was hanging out with people when I was uh you know uh, since the past two three years I've been talking to a lot of people like my friends and stuff. But it was uh just like hanging out. There was like not a conscious hanging out. You know, just hanging out for whatever purposes. You know, just like pleasure, pleasure moment, entertainment, joy, whatever it is. But uh, now things have changed. You know, so I have no need for entertainment or any pleasure moment, or I'm not really seeking for any company. I'm not lonely. So before all the hanging out was from a sense of lack. Now there's no sense of lack. So uh, the hanging out should be of some purpose, like uh, so of a conscious intention. Like the person who I'm talking to should bring out something from me, which is uh, of value, not you know just shit posting or shit talking whatever it is. So now it's becoming everything is becoming you know conscious, uh, conscious of what I'm doing, what I, what my actions will lead to, and you know what's my role in this place. Just figuring that out. First was a journey of you know waking up and stuff like figuring that you're not really this, you're not really that. but you know that's just uh whatever that's just uh the dissolution of your old self that's not really important you know that's the normal progression of a human living that's going to happen eventually or anyways that happens all the time you're dissolving as you grow but uh, after all those uh after you dissolve your old self you start looking at life in a different way and you start looking at yourself in a different way and things happen but you but i uh, I'm just trying to find my place you know what to do and because i was always always like everyone was like do something do something do this have a purpose and i'm like what the fuck are you talking about you know i have nothing to do i literally have no desires no wants i have nothing to do i don't even see a reason or an impetus to do anything i don't get anything but now that is changing you know i don't i don't really have a conscious intention but the energy itself is moving it wants to express it wants to go so i just have to you know uh, usher it and help it in whatever way i can so uh uh, uh... Uh is there any any you want to say to respond to what you're saying there? <laughs> yeah bro uh, it's like it gets hard for me to make a reason for why I'm doing things cuz uh I am processing as I am doing. So for uh, when you ask me why uh, there's no the, uh, you have an inclination to go out in the world even I'm not sure about that you know there's an inclination I can't even say there's an inclination there's some movement happening and that movement I'm giving the name as an inclination to go out in the world. So to explain what I am saying it gets very hard cuz uh, I keep uh, you know uh stepping on my words and i go into a different fucking tangent of some self or whatever it is i don't know but uh, it feels like i for every of my actions and responses i feel like i have to make a point you know maybe that's like a hidden expectation of pressure or whatever it is but so yeah i don't know what i've noticed yeah with with what you're what you're saying when you're like talking it's like you um yeah and uh yuji krishna mary told about this as well uh it's like uh you create something and then it's like you say something else which like negates the previous thing and it's like um mm. so then if you had a question if like a question or like a thought was generated by the first thing you said then it gets obliterated by the next thing you say so you can just like <laughs> you just keep going like this and you're like yeah. and it's almost like yeah. for me what it feels like is you're almost like sensing that i get a question and then you're obliterating it with the next thing you say so it's like you've got like a question mm. detection without me even saying it and then a bitteration mechanism going <laughs> yeah uh, uh. yeah bro bro the thing is the funny part that i don't detect your questions you know it's like everybody's brain works the same way so since i know what effect i uh, there's an intuition of how i will be perceived what i am saying so that intuition corrects itself again and again because you are perceiving myself that's why you're getting the question so i i know when the question will come so the moment question comes i have to uh, revert it again so the question should not be there ever So that's my responsibility the question should not never be there you know
What do, what do you think is going on with this questioner thing? What is the questioner? What is that? But the questioner is you. But uh, I don't know. It's not like right now you're asking me questions. So obviously, you have to ask questions. But people are just full of questions. You know, if you had no question, there's no self. Uh, so you're full of questions. You want to know all the time. You want to know that you want to know this, that, other, whatever it is. That knowing itself is you. Uh, that wanting to know itself is you. So uh, people, whoever t- come to me to talk to me, everybody has like a pent up uh, want. Uh, inside them they're always generating wants and a lot of lot of wants and that want is presented in the form of a question so the question has no answer obviously no questions have any answer the answer will not satisfy anything is that the pent up uh, energy needs to be released so once you ask me that question if i negate that question without uh, answering it or taking it in so the energy itself is dissipated so that seeking energy is itself gone over there the desire itself is gone over there so that gives a sort of release so that's the only place where some learning can happen or some clarity can happen so that's why i'm like uh, that's why everything i do everything i speak is oriented in that way you know how is oriented for relational purposes how i will come across to the person because every it's like it feels like for the past four four years i have been built only for the purposes of communication or to talk to people or whatever it is i don't know i don't know it's still not clear yet you know the things that have happened to me so that's the thing with things that happened to you like two three years ago things that keep happening you have no idea what the significance of that is and what purpose of that is until uh, much later you know it's like you're still unfolding all the things that have happened to you and then especially if the experience is very intense you're still unfolding what the you're still reeling from the effects of that so it's like uh, realization is constantly realizing itself again and again there's no end to it so that's why it's always unpacking and all all the time so no matter what you pick up you can always unpack it like numerously to endlessly so what what do you think about like reincarnation and stuff like that do you do you think that's real I don't know. I don't know, bro. Uh, you don't know. Uh, I mean, I have heard stories. Just uh, I cannot deny it. The, the where I have not experienced anything like that. Obviously, like my past lives or anything. So I never think about reincarnation. But I've seen a lot of people talk about their past life experiences where they have, you know, see their past lives. You know, that's basically it. So I don't know the significance of what that is. But yeah, you're probably born here a lot of times. I have no idea. It's not. It's not relevant to me. That's what I'm saying. That's the wild, bro. You, you've never had like past life experiences or anything, not even like a, a inclination towards it. Uh, I had an inclination towards it, not inclination. I just wanted to find out more about myself because uh, what I was realizing, I was like, shit, this is too much. Like, I must have done something to for me to for my brain to be this way. You know, it was wi- already wired in with the preset conditions of vipassana and all the all that all that crap. You know, the meditative things already inside there. So I just wanted to know what the reason was. So I'm like maybe past life because that's what my parents would always tell me, and whoever I would meet, like, oh, you probably did something in the past life. So that that sounds cool, but you know, uh, that's what it was. But I never, <laughs> yeah. you know, paid too much attention to it. It was just like a whim, and it went away, you know. So uh, uh, you know, with all these uh, like sages or whatever, like UG Krishnamurti, J Krishnamurti, like they had parents that are like, oh, this guy, this kid's a fucking prophet like he's gonna be he's gonna change the world <laughs> was that uh, did you have a similar thing your your parents then you had past lives no no bro no it was never like that but it was just like uh, my dad would always i mean everybody in my school and my parents would just call me super intelligent because okay. they would have this image that i'm super intelligent you know and now you know i obviously like that image i, I don't know <laughs> now i know that i like i used to like that image but at the time i thought it was, it was just me but nothing more than that you know everybody would just say that you know you have a lot of capability just use it just use it but people would just want me to use myself like a fucking object so i don't know beautiful yeah, yeah. um miyamoto musashi uh in his book of five rings is like mm, the the idea that people like see themselves as like products and like providing services it's like it's fucking shit. <laughs> That's my yeah, translation. It's, yeah, it's ingrained. Yeah, yeah, it's ingrained. The thing is ingrained because the whole society works from that paradigm, bro. It's really fucked up, and it causes, you know, yeah, it, it's really fucked up. Like, you have to come into your own. You have to become authentic. You know, people should stop fucking using you, and you should stop using yourself and your thoughts for some purpose. You know, you're not, you're not here to be used. You're here to live. Yeah, and that that seems like a pretty fundamental shift to me. It's like you can't be like, uh, yeah, it's hard to get out of that paradigm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Uh. Hmm. Kind of like the energy. Energy is maybe internally focused before, and now it's becoming like externally focused. Yeah. 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 For like the past year or so, it was like uh, 
I had like a major experience like three years ago where, you know, shit was completely different after that. Uh, I would not even call it an experience. It was like a non-experience, whatever it is. But ever since then, I was like, yeah, I, I have something that I need to tell people. But I was like, I was preparing myself because I thought I was not clean enough, not pure enough, not, not healed enough. But on that thing, uh, all I, found, I found out that all that healing thing and trauma thing just, just a past concept, is, I think is what you say. Like, yeah, no, no, like, yeah. Healing activity. So, uh, and I was not ready to go out in the world because I was, you know, internally focused to clean my body and uh, make my system uh, work well and change my perceptions and whatever it is. But now that is done. So before I was still a selfish motivation, you know, I was putting all my energy inside, still creating, creating a separation between me and the world. But now the separation between me and the world is totally dissolving. So whatever I do for myself is uh, what I do for the world, you know, and whatever I do for the world is working on myself. So it's happening in like a uh, synergy. So now there's no difference left. There's a total free, free flow movement from the internal to the external. And yeah. Um, this actually brings up uh, something that you said earlier. It's like, um, you know, people are saying things and they have like a want. And then you're like, you know, you do your thing and then it like dissolves and like the energy dissipates. Uh, but is that like, um, you know, what's actually happening there for the person? Are they, are they like, um, is it, is it, you know, is there some result that comes from that? Or is it just like a relief? You know, it's like a, it's like a massage, you know, you get like your, the tensions released and then they go, they leave and then they never see you again. Nothing happens. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 So I don't know. It just depends on the person. I can give you an example. You know what happened? Like, uh, Three, three or four days ago, my friend texted me and uh, I hadn't spoken to him in a while. And I tripped him out like long back, but we hadn't spoken since a while. And uh, he texted me saying, let's talk about thoughts or some shit like that. You know, let's uh, have a discussion about thoughts or something like that. Because he has this image of me that, you know, I'm meditating and I'm, you know, I, I have all these insights and realizations, whatever it is. So he comes, he, he came to me and he asked me some questions. Uh, he's like, where did, th- where did thinking begin from? Where did it start from in the monkeys and stuff like that? So it's like that type of topic he wants. He's like totally into, you know, he's also realized a lot, a lot of things. So he knows what, what's up a little bit. So he's asking me these things. And we just uh, spoke about it because I have no fucking idea why thoughts came up or what the fuck happened to the monkeys, you know. <laughs> Neither does he. But it's, it's irrelevant to him. But he thinks it's relevant, you know. So if it's relevant to him, then it's relevant to me. But in a way that will dissolve that uh, thing that is in his head. He doesn't have to care about the monkeys, you know. He, he, he himself is a monkey. I, I told him that, you know, in different words. So uh, from that, that way, I... Uh, I don't know what happened in, in the process of conversation. In that conversation, what happened was we, we got to a point where I was explaining something to him. And uh, he just told me that, bro, when you said that, uh, I reflected back and I found nothing. Good and I started laughing. So I don't know what the significance of these things are, but it's like, I don't know, it's you glimpse or the mind shuts off for a moment and you glimpse that, which is not the mind. And in that glimpse, that glimpse gives also release. But that glimpse, once it's done through wisdom, because we spoke through wisdom, we spoke through wisdom, we spoke, spoke through discernment. It was not based on faith. So it gives, a, uh, it gives discriminatory powers for the future. It's not just a release, you know. That's what I, at least that's what I think. Because I'm just putting words, but I have no idea what the fuck goes on over there, you know. And I, I don't want to ever uh, indulge in that. Because the moment that happened, he's like, well, something happened. And he started referring to it as an it, like an experience. Like an it. So I just told him, no, whatever you, whatever you experience was an illusion. That's it. You know, the trip has to keep going on. The moment you hold on to something, then that's the end. So you have to keep going on forward. So even since he was holding on to that thought, I just let go of that attachment to the thought, you know, so I felt a release and a sense of understanding or whatever it is. I have no idea what he felt, but yeah. Cool. It's like, um, mm. Mm. Yeah, it's like a uh, yeah, it's like mm, you said like something something can happen. It's like when that's not there, like something can happen. Yeah, it's really hard. Whenever whenever I try and like tune into like oh how can you put that into words? It's like oh that just doesn't fucking work. Yeah, it just doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. Even even the thing something can happen. It's a uh, not the right thing to say. It's something can happen is from his frame of view. From he since he's telling something has happened, so I've accepted that something has happened. But what what has happened to him was. He just for one second functioned as I was functioning. In that same second, as we were talking, he was on the same frequency as me for that one second. That's it. And there's nothing more. There's nothing grand about it. It's just uh, he's functioning the same way. He, at, the, at that time, the mind was not working. That's it. The mind was shut off. You know, the sense of self was momentarily not there. That's it. That's all I can say about that. I have no idea what happens. Yeah. 
Uh, and it was basically what he asked me was uh, after some explanation, and he was like, "Okay, that sounds really good." And then he was like, and I was t- t- talking talk to him something about him and his mind, and I'm like, uh, "I don't know." I said something, and he's like, "Then who are you talking to right now?" He asked me the question, "Who are you t- talking to right now?" And I just said, "You." That's it. And that was the that was the flip where he asked me the question, "Who am I?" Basically, he's asking me, "Who am I?" I just said, "You." Not nothing special about it, you know. But in that in that you, his mind stopped, and he saw, and that's it. I've had a, I've had an experience too. Um, someone they were like, "Who is asking that question?" And I was like, "Who is asking that question?" And then it's just like, "What?" It's like, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm. Uh, it was like uh, experience the whole universe at once or something. Yeah, yeah. Some wild yeah. shit happened. Bro, yeah. it's like what I'm good at is taking the other person's mind to the very edge, to their very own edge, so that uh, they at least uh, reach the unknown where uh, beside. Beyond that point, they have no idea what it is. So yeah, that's what I can do. You know, get the mind to the very edge. And uh, 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 talking about doing doing that, um, are you happy for people to like reach out to you on social media and ask to talk and stuff like that? Ask questions. Yeah, yeah, sure. Whenever anybody wants to talk to me, yeah, I'm totally free all the time. You know, and I have just like excess of energy to give out. Not even to give out, but I have no, I have no purpose for that energy. It's like all the time building, unlimited. Literally, the body has unlimited energy. It can never get tired. You know. Um, so yeah, I have no, I have no, you know, I have no need for myself. So anybody else can use me or uh, bring some use out of me. That'd be good. Yeah, and uh, the Twitter and Instagram's in the description because uh, it's, it's, it's you're like you're, your Twitter is like thinking about thing two or something. So yeah. 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 Uh, 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 earlier you mentioned like a pleasure movement it's like uh or like no no entertainment uh it's like you're not doing things for that purpose anymore like what is what is what is that can you talk more about that uh <laughs> that moment it's like all I, I, sorry, I just want to stop uh Whenever I like, um, I've noticed this. Whenever I like talk about something that was like before, like it's like five seconds, like the limit. It's like if it's outside of the short, like five second limit about something you said, it's like you're like, ah, fuck, I don't know how to like go, go back <laughs> to like know what the fuck yeah. you're talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because it's like uh, I use what I said in a different context, and when you ask a question, then it puts what I said in a different context. So I have to first tackle the context which you asked from, and then uh, tackle what I had said. So it becomes a very complex thing, which uh, for me in my head is just like, why the fuck am I doing this? You know. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you say, though. Uh, <laughs> pleasure moment is like all the activities we do are with a certain goal in mind. You know, if you turn on the TV, maybe you can say this is my habit, or you can turn on the TV because you are bored now. Something is this state as of right now is unsatisfactory, so you want to change it. So anything, any change from this is for a reason, and that reason will be a lack in the situation. So you know, all the activities are all your entire life is structured around how to escape that sense of lack. You know, keep going to different different things without looking at what is going on over here right now. And you hanging out with people, forming relationships based on sense of lack. You know, I mean, there can be relationships outside the sense of lack, but I don't know, not really though, because all relationships <laughs> are only and solely designed to uh, face your, you know, face your. Hidden shadow, shadow, whatever they call it, you know, just uh, face a different path of yourself. But after, after you're done through all of that, after uh, you're done through all of that, you will not see a re- need for relationships. You know, uh, it'll be formed on a different basis. A relationship will be formed on a different basis, like like you're forming right now. You know, it's not that I'm your friend or any such thing. I'm, I can be, I can be called your friend, but just for some other purpose. And the purpose is unknown. unknown. The purpose is unknown. You know. Yeah. So it's just spontaneous. I, I don't know anything. I don't. I never know what I'm doing for any reason. Even even right now, the podcast, I have no idea what will come out of it. I don't, I don't even know what I'm going to do with it. So it's just spontaneous. You know, I never ask myself why I'm doing things. Whatever comes up, I just do it. And asking why is just creating more stories around that. So why is suppression of your desires or your wants? So I, I never ask myself why I'm doing these things or whatever it is. And uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so you're talking about like the uh, uh, sense, of, sense of lack. Hmm. Sense of lack, and uh, uh, before you mentioned like loneliness, mm. yeah, I'm curious how you uh, are those like, uh, and then like relationships, like the like sense of lack and like relationships and like loneliness to me like appears as like a uh, mm, three three things that lots of people talk about and are interested in. So I'm curious your thoughts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So sense of lack it can also be caused uh, called as a sense of separation. Uh. So whenever you feel separate, you feel uh, you. 
uh, want to be not separate so you feel a lack a uh, lack of uh, boundlessness so your your true nature is boundlessness so whenever uh, you're contradicted you feel a sense of lack you know and uh relationships uh, you i don't know about relationship bro actually uh, it's like for me i've always found myself in a relationship and then i w- wake up and i realize myself that i'm in a relationship it's not that i ever form a relationship with the basis of my relationship you know i just look at my life and i realize that i have all these relationships and if i go and uh, analyze why the relationships are formed and what on what, on what basis then before uh, it would only be and right now it's only for the other person's benefit because they want something from me since i don't want anything from them it's uh, it's one sided from them but before it was mutual because uh, i wanted to have friends wanted wanted to have friends for what reason because you're lonely lonely meaning uh, you feel isolated there's a sense of isolation so you want to connect you want to have a connection because you're not connected with to yourself you know so if you connect with yourself then uh, your movement is different your purpose in life and your orientation is different so once you but you are since we are operating from a sense of isolation then you want to you know hang out connect and in that way find yourself because uh, there's no other way and sometimes people come to a point where there's no other way to know about yourself besides to go in a relationship you know because relationship show, is like a profound mirror for you to see so it's like a healing ground like a fighting ground for you to you know know yourself and know the other person because knowing the other person also knowing yourself the everybody else is just uh, other part of yourself you know and if you actually look closely whatever you see in the other person you'll always see in yourself and you can never see anything in the other person if you're not seeing it in yourself you know so if somebody says somebody is dishonest it's because they know what dishonesty is and they only know what you know this honesty is from looking at in, in the in the themselves that's the only way so uh, and loneliness bro i don't know uh, yeah i think before my only motivation to talk to people and tell these things was because i was super lonely like i felt like i was the only one going through life alone you know going through all these things like what i was going through the, my entire life itself was separating me from other people so yeah and uh, for me i never focus on the isolation or loneliness that part because it was uh, shattered by all my activities so the activities itself, that's why i say there's no need to you know uh, work, work on your trauma or your healing you just throw yourself in activities and the activity itself will show you what the f- faults are and how you can work on them and whatever else so yeah but uh, i don't know yeah uh so what kind of what do you mean by activities that are like um work or like a uh, 9 to 5 like uh meditation uh uh i don't know whatever whatever you like you know uh, uh bro each person has their own unique uh, each person is a totally unique person you know and if you're a totally unique person you have a totally totally unique lifestyle a totally unique body and consciousness and ways of uh, use, using things so uh, if you're totally unique then you have a unique place in the world and you have a unique role in the world so that is what i call as enlightenment you know to find a unique role not some uh, bastard experience that you have how to operate with that experience into the world and for what reason that is that thing so if that is the incentive then you always working for that you always trying to go out in the world and find out what you can do and uh, i don't know i don't know uh, they can be they, they even talk about in the hindu where it's like karma yoga that's what they say as the you know yoga of doing yoga of action so in action you can find out but for me yeah yeah i don't know yeah mm so it's like uh, uh, the idea of a uh, uh... like oh let me let, let me like separate out this like thing that's a trauma and then work on it mm, not not good but like let me just like be in the world and then it kind of it's like use that to solve it good uh i, I mean it's not why it's not for me to say what people well, what is good or not you know hey, if you have a trauma you can work on it fuck don't listen to me you know shit <laughs> that that could be bad but uh i'm just saying what happened to me where cuz yeah. uh, i don't before so my mindset was i have no traumas i have no uh, hurts no injuries no nothing no no that sort like i'm a bulletproof i'm a bulletproof guy okay that's what i thought but uh, that's what i'm reading about uh, traumas healings and all that thing where people talk about constantly and i'm like what, what are they talking about for what reason are they doing this thing you know uh, where are they find, finding all these fa- faults and what i saw was finding the fault itself with one big trauma you know looking at yourself with one big trauma and looking from this perspective one big trauma and even the fact that you have a idea of trauma is itself a trauma so but my whole perspective on trauma changed where i acknowledge that trauma trauma exists you know how that happened to me was since i said uh, i was firm that i have no trauma there's no no need for any healing nothing to be done you know so what happened was i realized that i was being traumatized each moment of my life because each moment is a shockingly new totally unknown so whatever is unknown gives you a shock you know each moment is a shock 
so you're getting shocked by each moment so you're getting a trauma because each moment whatever you experience you carry forward with you so it, it, the past will always linger on to the present so that is traumatic so that itself the past itself is a trauma the whole of past is trauma so i can never separate out this was traumatic this was traumatic for me the all of past is trauma that go the complete and you never be traumatic that's that's my identity but you can work on it separately and whatever it is but even the one working on the trauma is the trauma that's what i'm saying there's no other person there's no separate entity who can work on the trauma there's no way there's only trauma you just pull up trauma if you accept that there's trauma then all you are is trauma there's nothing other than trauma there's no awareness of trauma or there's no consciousness and trauma there's just trauma oh cool, man and the sense of lack is just a concept you know it's just to use some things uh, uh-huh. i don't really think anybody has a sense of lack you know they just uh, doing whatever they want but it's just a way to conceptualize and talk about things that i don't know for what reason bro yeah so the, the it's like i can take different yeah. perspectives or and i can shift perspective where i'm like i'm saying there's a sense of lack and i'm on perspective uh, where i can just see people doing whatever they want you know i don't see any sense of lack over here but uh, since i have had that perspective and it's useful one to have to you know understand people's conditions and how uh, behaviors are working on so i can take it but the freer perspective or the freedom it comes from in, uh, just seeing that everybody's doing whatever they want and there's actually no sense of lack and nobody is feeling lack of whatever it is so it changes the quality and texture of your ex- own experience you know since you since you since i was used to seeing a lack in myself i would see it out, out there once it's not over here then you cannot see it out there Yeah, and uh, uh, your cat is participating in the podcast a little bit. What is your cat's name? So we can introduce. Oh uh, yeah, my my cat's name is Royce. He's Royce. we just got him like five months ago. I think I'll get him. Royce. <laughs> Royce. Yeah, he's he's pretty cute, but he's pretty annoying too. He's always <laughs> always he always wants attention. <laughs> yeah. Um. So you said that there's like um. Mm, everything's kind of becoming conscious or like a conscious intention uh i'm curious what you mean by that i don't really understand that my that feels like fucking months ago uh we're only some minutes into the actual recording uh what even content did you say that in oh yeah it was like uh everything everything went from like mm, yeah being being sort of like uh, uh fucking around to like more conscious yeah mm-hmm. uh like you don't want a conversation that's just like a pleasure oh. moment you want one that's like conscious intention uh yeah. so what i'm saying is everything that i have ever done or before if i analyze myself everything i have ever done was a sort for a purpose for a goal that i will do this so that or i will use this so that but and everybody is following that system of that framework of working i will do this so that i, I will get this or i will it will help my life or it will boost something whatever it is but i want certain activities that are done for no reason that happens spontaneously or uh without anything it, it could always be said that the activities are unconscious that's what makes it conscious i don't know if i make myself clear uh <laughs> wait yeah yeah so it's like uh uh mm. but if you if you have an intention that each person has has it has their own agendas that you have my agenda and i have your own agenda so it's totally separated but if there's no agendas then the two points can have a communion not even a communication there can be communion between two points the consciousness can be totally merged in that activity itself it can be singing dancing talking whatever it is can be anything you know but there should be no intention and no intention means there should be no self there should be no self here any intention you keep is yourself for that moment you intend i want to go take a dump that's yourself for that moment when you take a dump uh, then self is gone you know so each person lives by some intention so my intention is just living there's no intention to live just in, living is itself an intention you know people are living for some reason people are living to grow to understand to get enlightened or whatever it is for me i just find myself that i'm just living you know there's no purpose no intention here and the like my situation create my intention you know uh just like this you know the energy moving before the energy was totally inside but like i was totally dead you know for one whole year i didn't not do anything at all but now that any, everything over here is fixed so i want to go out in the world it, that's not even my option that's not my choice you know the energy decides that life decides that not even the energy i'm just calling it's just the whole intelligence cost like whatever you call it you know Uh, do you have anything to add? Uh, uh. Mm. Uh, when you ask me the question, what do you mean by conscious intention? It's like before, uh, I was conscious, but there was still a separation between me and my life. That I am uh, living my life or I'm organizing my life or whatever it is. So now the separation between me and my life is going away. It's like uh, it's just life or just living. 
and once that happens then the living is uh, before the living was not organized it was not organized from one principle everything was all activities were for different different purposes but now living itself is organized based on one principle and that principle is nameless you know it's organized on that one principle so everything is oriented and organized in that way so that's why i say it's conscious uh, the whole whole activity is conscious my entire breadth of living is conscious you know each per- each, each activity has a purpose not that i know the purpose but it is oriented in that way so cuz each uh, each moment comes from the very source uh, each my whole life is oriented from the source not that uh, i stop the life i have some plans and i go to the source no it begins from the source and ends at the source there's not nothing in between so that's the orienting principle i don't know if i put it in that way but yeah uh and do you feel like that's something that people can gradually come into it's like something one part of their life like their work isn't aligned with a uh, source and then it is afterwards or do you think that's like oh no you have to be you know you have to have like the bigger thing or everything you know, the whole life has to be oriented around it otherwise it's not a thing mm. uh i don't know it depends people live live, uh, live all kinds of you know all kinds of life all kinds of fucked up life people the first thing you have to be is authentic with yourself you know being authentic with yourself is the most uh, hardest thing to do and if you actually are authentic with yourself you find out you, have, you don't want to do a damn thing that's the, that's a really hard f- fact to gra- grasp with uh, so first if you have to actually organize and or, uh, orient your life then it has to be first broken down only uh, with a completely ravaged and a destroyed uh, empty field can you create something new of uh, organization and order again so if you are, you have to be ready to look at each and every aspect of your life and Yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's a whole process. That's what living is actually. I don't know. There's no no shortcut one thing that can be done or cannot be done. But it can be done since I've done it, it can be done, of course. Uh So it's like um it's like there's one way you could look at this to be like, "Oh, let's like make it into like a method." You know, it's like let's align all this stuff with the source and then uh like eventually you're going to get to a point where it's like, "Oh, you like fully aligned uh is that does that make any sense to you or is that just making no goddamn sense uh i don't know bro the thing the source thing uh mm, i don't know actually it, it's like ross your question again yeah so it's like um mm mm let me find it again <laughs> <laughs> sorry uh let's see Yeah. So it's like um mm, you know you're talking about like coming from like one orienting principle and that principle is like the source you know and it's like um by like getting rid of stuff uh and like not being conceptual or whatever mm-hmm. now now everything's sort of organized around this principle uh, uh and I'm just wondering like um do you think it's possible for people to sort of uh orient from that principle like sometimes and not other times uh or like bro yeah. if we are if you're speaking like this then everybody is already orienting or uh, that their, their entire life is oriented around that one principle that is the self their self but uh that's the thing the self is still there so the life is still controlling the self or you are uh, you still hold the doership or ownership or control ship over there so once that is dropped then the source itself is oriented there's no other option there's no nothing, nothing, nothing standing between the source and you and even saying the source there's a I don't like using that word, but for the purpose of communication, that will be accurate to say yes. Cool. Oh, I'm thinking here. I I I I was thinking. I was thinking the reaction, thinking in the uh, podcast. So, what's it like being a uh, partic in a body? <laughs> like, what does your body feel like? Does it feel? Do you feel particular like uh, energy movements? Do you feel like relaxed? Does it feel different to how it did before? Can you? What's your like bodily experience right now? Um, bro, the, the body never asks what am I experiencing. You know, it's only for the mind to ask what am I experiencing or what the body is feeling like right now. Whenever you say that I'm feeling the body, you're already in a state of separation. This is a state of separation between you and the body, and you and the sensations of the body. So even when I tell you about something about my body, I cannot. I have to first conceptualize that I have a body, and there are feelings in the body, and then I'm telling you about what the body is. So it's already secondhand information. So I cannot really tell you what I'm feeling in the body because I can't even tell myself what I'm feeling in the body. I can't even if there's a sensation of anxiousness. First of all, I'll never tell myself I'm anxious. There's probably some sensation over here, and I won't even pay any attention to it. The moment you label it anxious, then you want to do something about it, and then you know it becomes a whole mess. So I never I let the body do what it needs to do. You know, I never interfere with it. 
and it's not even me saying that uh, I let the body do. There's no separation between me and the body. You know, the body speaking right now, but uh, it cannot say anything about itself. Uh, so, uh, 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 do you have a, a, a thought? Uh. Yeah, uh, no thought. I was just like, okay, that's that's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, you like that? <laughs> that's good. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so like uh how would you describe the process of what you're doing right now when there's like um no separation you know it's like you can't talk about the body you can't talk about the past you can't talk about uh you know so like what's the what are you what are you doing that's like making words appear it's you bro it's you who's making me talk really i'm not even talking you ask me it comes out like a machine reply you know so i'm not even talking for, for my experience i'm not even talking you you are talking to me and you're making me talk so that's it there's no uh, even to ask myself why am i talking is a irrelevant question you know it's you who's talking basically i'm not even talking there's nobody here really it is talking and is it the same like let's say like your mm, parents talk to you or like i talk to you like what kind of stuff comes out you know it's like um They would talk about like the mirror or whatever, like being like a mirror, uh, and like you know, like if some like normie guy talks to you, you're like, "Hey man, you know, yeah, I'd like, you know, I want to go to the club or whatever." And then I told you, you talk about like spirituality stuff. Is that the kind of situation, or is it more consistent? I don't know. No, yeah, it depends. I'm hilarious. Some normie guy, you go to the club. <laughs> What the fuck am I talking about? <laughs> <laughs> no. I love that shit, dude. What the fuck? <laughs> Uh, or is it more consistent? Anna? No, yeah, it depends. The person brings out the conversation. <laughs> uh, they have the topics. Because my head is always empty. Uh, I will try to make up some concept on the spot to explain this, but uh, it's not really. So I'm really like speaking conceptually. But uh, it depends on the situation. Whoever is speaking to me, whatever is needed at the moment, the person will bring it out. Of me. And uh, the normie thing. Uh, I don't know. I would always like all my friends were just normies, you know. Uh, I just joined Twitter Twitter recently and found out that all these people are doing this charity thing. I thought I was, you know, just a weird weirdo. So there's no problem with me for normies, but uh, it's like uh, I can sense separation. I can sense the separation the, by the way they're speaking, by the things they're asking me. I can know that they're uh, functioning in a different way. Whoever it is, it doesn't matter if it's a normie or not. Even the spiritual people, the way they're asking the questions and uh, what they think, I, it makes me. It shows me that they are functioning from a different way, like they're on some path, or they're progressing, or they're wanting, or getting, or something. So that's the only difference for me. There's no even normie. It just, uh, yeah, yeah. It just depends on the situation. And my, I speak to my parents a lot, so it depends. Whatever they want, you know, it depends. Yeah, whatever is that. Like. Sometimes it can be it can, something weird can totally come out, but it has uh, its own use. So I don't decide what needs to be said. Uh, yeah. Uh, so like uh, uh, on your on your um, path. What kind of people have you sort of uh, like found that you were like, oh, these this guy is the real deal. Like I like this guy fucking <laughs> rules. You know, I immediately notice discomfort from you with this question immediately. Yeah, immediately. Yeah. Do you want to yeah. talk about why maybe that 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 is or? or... Uh, yeah. I don't even. I don't really know. It was just like uh, I I don't know discomfort because. Who whoever I found resonant with was for some other purpose because I was just resonating with my own illusions that there's something called enlightenment, you know. That's why I was seeking all these people, listening to all these things. They was they were playing on my illusion. That's why I uh, don't like talking about teachers because they always play on the uh, listeners' illusions that there's something called enlightenment, observe that there's awareness, or all that crap. So they're feeding you the concepts which confuse you, and then to solve that confusion, you go to them again and again to clear that concept which they have put in their In the inside the in the first place, so for that reason, I don't want to say anything, but I wanted to put my reaction into words. But I could not put it into words. It was just like a visceral reaction. I just you know told the names of the people. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. This, this, yeah. This. So for the whole path thing, it's uh. Wait, wait, yeah, so, <laughs> like how the fuck did I say this? Jai Krishna Murti <laughs> and Yuji Krishna Murti. Those are the only two. Uh, I would say were really yeah. good. Like. Whoever else I saw, I only started seeing people after I had my uh, first pop, like three years.
Whenever, whenever anyone asks me about someone like a spiritual guy, I'm always just like usually Christian Murray because he's such a hilarious person to recommend. It's like it's like a, yeah, you go but... and listen to him and he's like he never gives anyone anything. You never get anything from him. It's yeah. funny. Yeah. 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 It's the most entertaining shit ever. But the group dynamic and the people relation skills that happen over there is just unreal. It's just unreal. Yeah. Uh, actually, I want to talk about you. So uh, I've noticed with different. Um, you know, people who have had these kind of experiences, uh, it's like there's a certain spontaneity that comes into their body and movements. Um, and that's kind of how, like, I, I have, like, enlightenment dar. It's like you can tell if someone's enlightened when they're, like, you know, their hands are just kind of, like, moving on their own. And I've noticed mm. with, like, Yuji Krishnamurti, his, like, his body was, like, the most the most spontaneous that I've ever seen. It's, like, every, every movement of his body... Um, it's like there was zero conscious thought in any of it at all. I'm curious what yeah, your thought yeah. is on that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's why I was attracted to uh, Yuji because I would whenever I would look at the person, I would not uh, listen to the words he's saying because I would always listen to it in the way that the word was just noise. You know, I would have to translate what he was saying so that I could make sense. So I, that was not appealing to me. So I would just look at the person or. Uh, I don't know, just absorb the person, you know, if you, if there is a way for you to look at people where you can, there's no separation between you and them. So you totally imbibe their essence and find out what it is and from what, from what place is he functioning? So for you, he was totally like, uh, totally unknown. Like, I don't know what the fuck that guy was on, you know, uh, literally like, where, where is he coming from? Where is he springing? Everything is like springing. The whole thing was totally different. Like, uh, it was non-energy, you know, it's not even energy. Energy, people have energies, but that was non-energy. Where is it coming from some, somewhere else? There's a source of all energies. So that was very, uh, very unique. That the whole thing about Yuji is totally unique. Never before, and if there is anything such as enlightenment, it is that you know, nothing, nothing more, nothing less than that. It was uh, nature selected him. Literally, roasted his entire body. He was dead for three days. He came back uh, alive with all the chakras opened up and stuff. That's not normal. It's not happened to anybody. Anybody I have ever seen, you know. So it's totally unique. And in one of his interviews, he's even said that his body uh, can never make a wrong note because it's t- totally tuned in the perfect way by nature itself. So he's not worked on it himself, you know. If a self had not worked on the body, the nature itself has worked on the body. So it's a god even gift, literally, his body was. So that's uh, my views. I mean, maybe some personal attachment over there, but not really, you know. It's just uh, uh, overwhelmed there. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, uh, uh, you see a lot of people who, like, um, you get similar things with uh, abductees, UFO abductees, where they, like, go into the spaceship or whatever, they have some experience and when they come down, all of their chakras are opened. Uh, no, or like, ha- some yeah, of them. Yeah. And it's like, um, and also people mm-hmm. have had experiences where it's like they're in, they're like they're in a dream, for example, and you know, some like Buddha appears and they're like, bah! and then they like, yeah, they just wake up with all their chakras opened. Yeah. So. Damn, bro, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, but I feel like usually something different, man. I don't know. I know. I'm very attached as well. I'm very attached as well. I'm like, no, it's different. He's special. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. But but it's not attachment, you know. Yeah, it is different though. It is the not not he is different. Not that what he experienced or what he had got, but what he's saying, uh, and how he is saying it. That's what is more important, and why he's saying it. If you can find those three things out, then you will change for sure. Not that he will change you, or whatever. It will cause an internal psychological change within you. But, uh, yeah. yeah, I don't think I'm attached. Like, uh, you can't really be attached to that guy, you know, he, uh, he totally breaks you down. There's nothing, <laughs> you only be attached to your idea of enlightenment. You can't be attached to Yuji. There's no such thing called Yuji. It's just a, mm. uh, it's just a flowing, moving energy that you can't separate anywhere and say that that was, that was Yuji or that was not Yuji. Yeah, it's funny because you mentioned he's like non energy, and it's like all the other teachers, I would like, I'd be able to like connect to them. Uh, like connect to their like energetic presence and then like download. And it's kind of like kind of like what you're talking about, where it's like there's no separation, but it's more energetic. Yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah. I can't do it with him. I can't do it with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he doesn't give you a place to hold on. Because other people, all the other people, they have a, a way of presenting. They have a persona. They have established ways of energetic movements, and they have an established presence. So they have distinguished themselves. You know, they are distinguished. So then, then you can pick that on. They have a different flavor. They have a unique flavor. But Yuji has no flavor. There's no flavor in that. There's no flavoring. The flavoring is the pers- the self is the flavoring. If the self is not, then you cannot uh, tune into it. There's no. It's a black hole. It's like a black hole. Literally, you cannot tune into anything. Yeah. So, so I started seeing people after that. 
And whoever I saw, it was like they were my contemporaries, you know, like they they were talking the same things I was talking in like a way that was portrayed for the public and their desires to you know know about these things. So it was never like something uh, they're saying or they're speaking from a place that I had no idea where they're speaking from. So everybody on the common market place, everybody was like that, but except J.K. Krishnamurti and U.G. Krishnamurti. It felt like there was uh, something else, or there was something, I don't know, something missing in me that was over there, you know? So even that was an illusion. So the, that's why the teachers are teachers because they show you your illusions. Uh, when I first saw them, there was a separation between me and Jay Krishnamurti. They felt like I was something else and he was speaking from some, some other place. But as I heard him more and more, the separation started dissolving. And then I, uh, at, uh, at one point, the first time I had that pop, it was listening to Jay Krishnamurti and I did not know who was speaking, if it was me listening or it was me speaking. So at that time, the separation dissolved. So it was not the separation between me and him, it was the separation between me and myself, you know. Just because I found lack in myself, that I, 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 that I compared that lack to J. Krishnamurti and I found that there's something missing. So he just helped, was a mirror to clear my own feelings of lack or, you know, uh, some untruths or some illusions. And even Yuji, Yuji was like, you can't even hold him, you know. You just listen to him and he does what he does to you. He'll destroy you straight. And that's it. But there are a lot of other people who are, you know, all these teachers are there doing their own job, you know, they're pretty good. But I have a problem with these uh, spiritual terms nowadays because they separate it from the human domain or from the normal domain. All these things that people are realizing would be better off if it was not cloaked in the clothes. Name names, name names, name names. <laughs> Who's doing this spiritual thing where they're separating it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's the whole, 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 the whole idea of you know talking yeah. about these things. It's the cause, the cause of separation. It's mm -hmm. like uh, for me, I begin with a place where there's for me no reason to talk. That's why you ask me if you can't talk about that, you can't talk about that, you can't talk about that. I literally can't talk about anything. There's nothing to talk for me to talk about. All communication for me is unnecessary. So for I only communicate to, to I don't know why I communicate, but uh, there's no reason for people to say these things and go out in the public, whatever. But it, it's necessary, necessary as the times were. You know, I'm just. Uh, Wanting something that cannot happen, or you know, fighting against something that's irrelevant. You know, that's what was happening. That that's what happened. But uh, we can speed up the process of uh, dis uh, destruction because everything that is born, uh, in, even in the culture, just gets destroyed. You know, or goes away. The significance of it goes away. So we can speed up the process so that a new can emerge. Because uh, there'll be a hybrid. There's something new is going to emerge. You know, that's the purpose for this shit happening all the time. Oh, of spirituality or all these concepts, because. For me, actually, for me, it was very natural. When I had my experiences, it was, uh, it was, if I had to put my path or even my life in a perspective, it was just like me growing up. You know, I had my first pop when I was 18. That's, that's when you turn and uh, when you become an adult. So that was like a natural progression of life for me. You wake up, you find out, and you, that was like nothing special. I would not even call it, call it an awakening. Uh, the only reason that was placed in my head that it was an awakening was of the, was of the information out in the internet. So it created a split within me that I was that I thought that I had awakened and other people had not awakened. So my whole path was dissolving that separation that I am awake and other people are not, not, not awake. So that was my whole path to, you know, see that there is actually no such thing as awake and not awake. But if, when you have that experience, you clearly feel that you're awake and somebody else is not. So that was the whole thing of how to uh, manage that dichotomy of, you know, the separation that even the stage of consciousness or whatever it is, you know, total separation. Could you feel that last part again? What do you say? <laughs> Bro, it was... Uh, uh, I, I said I didn't send it. Send it. <laughs> it was like, uh, you feel that these experiences make you one with life, but just because you have had that experience uh, separates you from the other person who has not had that experience. So by the virtue of you having these experiences and thinking of having these experiences, it's creating a separation in human society where the people who are having these experiences are not having any experiences. <laughs> So that, that's where I'm talking about. And that caused a lot of practical difficulties in my life in, uh, from, uh, in communication and in relationships. So that was my whole thing. And I would see this playing out again and again with all these teachers and creating all these misconceptions and people interacting with all these things. That's why I said that uh, my whole path was not just to de demolish the spiritual things inside me, but, do, but to tackle all the spiritual concepts out in the world. So that's why I went through all these things. I went through all the teachings just, to, just so that I could discard them. Because you can't discard anything without going through it. So I had to go through all of them just to discard it. So that I know everything from every aspect, from every domain, the Buddhist, Hindu, whatever it is, you know. So, uh, uh. Bro, uh, 
I don't know that I didn't uh, when I said that the J Krishna Murthy was and Yuji had something that I did not have. It was not uh, it was not in the domain of uh, experiences or realizations. They were they had imbibed it in a way that was authentic and integral and separated and which would cause an actual radical change in the world. So I want to have that way. I want to have that way of uh, imbibing and um, being authentic to it. So in that process of imbibing what J K Yuji and J K was, that's when I found out. that uh, me having these experiences was the one that is causing me a problem for imbibing that way of being so that i can uh, talk to people about it so that's how i was saying uh, it that having these experiences causes a sense of separation because all experiences are causing a sense of separation your experiences by my experiences so it's like separate so there is a way to live without accumulating any experience and uh, without even referring to any experience so yeah that's what uh, yeah i don't know. So even UG and J J J K were uh, sort of creating that false separation. Is that what you're saying? No, no. So they were not not really. I mean, uh, I don't want to comment on them, but uh, I mean, in you, like in your reaction to them, not like in the world. Yeah. Mm, in, no, when I saw them, I saw that uh, there was a sense of separation that was in my head due to the experiences I had had, oh. or due to the realizations I had had. and that was prohibiting me from evolving or going further or imbibing those experiences into my own since i still thought that they were separate from me since i thought that something had happened to me or something is happening to me so that was whatever was happening to me was strengthening the me that whatever i experienced no matter how profound it was no matter how ego killing it was it was still adding to the ego all the time so cuz i was craving craving more and more experiences experiences all the time it's so not even craving but the way i was living living my life i was getting experiences like realizations whatever it is so i always had a concept of what experience was And so I would put everything that happened to me in the box of that experience. But something else happened where that it even destroyed the box of experience. So I can never even say I experienced things anymore. So in that way, they they helped me on that uh, to show me that you know uh, even the so-called mystical and profound experiences that I was having is the one that is causing separation and is the one that is prohibiting me from talking and uh, functioning in the world. Because if I function from that place, I would become a I would turn out to be like a cult leader or something like narcissistic or whatever it was. So I had worked through all those tendencies and all those habits, not worked through it, but to see how that uh, generated, how it get created. And it's because it's not in your control, you know, because the experiences are happening to you. So what is generated after the experience is not in your control, for not, for sure not. So you have to reel from the uh, reel from the effects of the experiences after a while. So would you say you have like a sense of like what's happening in the culture because it seems like yeah sometimes you're talking from like mm, like this is what's happening to me and sometimes you're talking like hey you know you know there's like a spirituality uh non-spirituality divide like in culture that's like affecting a bunch of people yeah So I just want to clarify this question um it's like a uh, uh, like I mean you're talking about like patterns like when you find the pattern and there like there's no separation between like you and the world it's like that pattern is the same pattern that's like in operation everywhere uh so there's like there's some you know, there's some connection to like everything there you know what i mean it's like not just like you personally working through your own stuff yeah mm, does that make any sense yeah Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I feel. Because when you work, whenever that's what I've always felt. Whenever I've worked through some of my things, that feels like I've worked for the world. You know, that I've worked through the stuff of the world too. So whatever you heal in yourself, you heal in the world. That's uh, I don't know if that's what you mean. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and that's that, that's also uh, that's also true. Because healing is a different thing. But whatever whatever you create is also getting created in the world. That's what I'm saying. Each of your thoughts are affecting that. So the more you create these concepts, the more conceptual the world becomes. The world becomes needs to become more real, not conceptual. So if we uh, perceive and generate from concepts, then we will eventually only become conceptual. There is no other way. So uh, if the perception itself is changed, then we we'll start producing concepts, or we we'll start producing concepts in a way that gets uh, is not hindering. Because even things like space and time and all these things are concepts, you know. And it will, uh, it science and physics have already come to a, a halt point because the, of the way they were looking at things. So it has to even percolate into that dimension or even that field of human thinking, science and whatever it is, so that. the whole thing gets changed because they'll find out something else what space is what time is and what whatever it is so that's why you know and even people who can have these awakenings but to put this awakening they have to use concepts so they can become conceptual so i don't know there there's a way to look at things without uh, without inference or i don't know directly oh 
Um, so it's like a, uh, there's like a, um, mm, yeah, this is really hard to articulate, huh? It's like a, a, oh man, I can't do it. I'm, I'm going to try, I'm going to try. Do it. Yeah. Uh, it's like whenever anyone's, uh, existing in any space with any, like, uh, modality in their perception, it's like shared across the culture. And by shifting ourselves, that's shifting it across the culture too. So like culture and the person is like the same thing. Yeah. 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 That's true. That's true. Yeah. That's how, uh, that's how it is. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's not like that. Uh, it's limiting the speciality that people, for, for me right now, as I see the world, people are waking up, like popping out for no reason at all. Like without any practice, without anything. So I'm saying for those people who are popping up or waking up, whatever you want to call it, the only place they have to go is spirituality. So they become limited in that. But if they do not go anywhere else, then they would create their own domain, you know, their own uh, unique expressions without using the past. The, the point of awakening is to let go of the past totally. So after you awaken, then you go back into the society and the society is using past concepts and past ideas. So you attach yourself to those things. So it's a limitation for the one who's awakened, you know, so the limit is a limitation for me because I'm totally awakened for sure. But the only way I could talk about it was by using the human concepts or by using other people's concepts. So I was not being authentic, you know, because I had to use other people's information to talk about these things. So I had to, in a way, make it my own, not in a way, um, or to separate it. I don't know. I don't know how to put it, but yeah, it was just like not to use anything from the outside and generate everything from the in, uh, inside. So like no additional information should be generated out into the world. It just creates disservice, you know. Uh, more concepts because reality is without any concepts and concepts are not needed maybe maybe for talking or doing whatever it is but it's not really needed you cannot conceptualize your experience that's just destroying your experience uh so let's say like i'm uh mm, i'm like a mm, 17 year old uh and <laughs> i uh i've started like going through some kind of uh experiences that people would call spiritual Fantasizing, completely fantasizing, completely fantasizing. <sighs> and I'm like, oh, this seems kind of like, right? Um, like, let me like go, uh, you know, learn, you know, this new age stuff. Uh, what, what would be like, uh, the thing that I, that I would do instead of like going into all of the past knowledge and culture and learning all of that? Yeah. No, if, if, oh, if... No, okay, okay, okay. Be right back, everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 uh. Like, let me like go uh you know learn you know this new age stuff uh what what would be like uh the thing that i that i would do instead of like going into all of the past knowledge and culture and learning all of that yeah no if 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 some experiences have happened then the experiences itself will give you the certainty not to go anywhere else, you know. And uh, I don't know, I don't know. I, I just like I have a hypothetical situation. I don't know how to talk about it, but I can just say what happened with me and what problems I faced. So it was like I was awakened, but I had, I had no, way, no way to express myself. Because there was a need for expression. Because whatever wakes up wants to express, wants to come out all the time. It has to climb out of your body and go out. But uh, there was no way for me to do it without creating illusions in people's head because I would say that this is awareness then they would understand from some, some other concept and I would say this consciousness or I would say this is the self whatever it is you know I, whatever I would say they would take it in some other way they would interpret it in some other way based on the frameworks of what they had known so I had to find out a way to destroy the frameworks in people's mind so that I can speak so that they can listen properly because most of that people are listening from their own ideas and from their own uh, knowledge and concepts so that, that prohibits total listening to happen and if there's total listening happening and if you're speaking, then that listening and speaking itself is a change. If you're actually awake and if somebody's listening to you, in that listening, they're as awake as you are then. And that, that itself is the change. So, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, it, it, so like, when uh, someone's talking and you're, like, uh, detecting, detecting, like, a, mm, like, a craving in them or, or whatever it is, or, like, a you know, them wanting something or like some misalignment. Uh, 
And as well as that, it's like uh, when you're like sensing things about like culture and how it's like structured and how like things would be better another way. Like what's that kind of like in your experience? Is it just sort of like, um, yeah, is it kind of happening mm, not on a conscious level or is it more like, oh, like I can kind of feel it out and tell things right now? Oh, uh, yeah. So what? how I was, how I get these ideas or these ways of thinking was I would have no thoughts, no ideas, nothing, nothing at all. And I would just wake up and do whatever it is. I'll meditate and I'll just go on Twitter or go on the internet and read something. And what I would read would just uh, create this feeling of, no, this is not right. Whatever is happening is not right. And I would inquire into not, not inquire, but I would be like, why am I having these reactions? And I would not ask myself the question, why am I having these reactions? But the reaction itself would unfold. So it would be like I was viewing for the world, the world itself. And the world itself was reacting at what it was producing. So to correct the misconnections, not, not, not even to correct, but just why the reaction was caused for some purpose. And the reactions unfolded. And from that reaction was uh, these ideas and these ways of looking at things. And it's not even a way of looking at things. It's just uh, just being a responsible human being, you know. Don't put shit in people's heads. Just let them do their own thing. It's just the most responsible thing to do. And even this concept of help, helping other people, uh, it's, it's promoting the frame that people need to be helped. And people uh, are, you know, have have some problems. So even the helping and all these, uh, all this thing is, uh, I don't know. And even the word compassion, you know, compassion is just compassion is an action. You can't feel compassion. Compassion is not something that a human being can have. It's an action. Nobody can be compassionate. That's an irrelevant statement to make. So all these things where people say, "May all beings happy" and stuff like that, where you're not doing anything for them to be happy. You know, you're just wishing for them to be happy. If you were doing something to, for them to be happy, you would never ever say, "May all beings happy." Be happy. So I would see, just see these contradictions also in myself and other people, and that would create all these reactions within me, which are, would reframe the way I think and would, uh, you know, whatever it is, I don't know. Uh, it's like the author is always instructing the internal, and the internal is always... Hmm? Bro, I'll, uh, it would be better for me to say that the things I say and the reactions I have is because I look at the world as a very simple and ordinary man with no education, no concepts with basic requirements is food, uh, eating and fucking. So that's the only way I look at the world because that's the only survival there. So, because uh, there are half the world is uh, starving, you know, the, there's so much parity, disparity, all these things are really fucked up. So when all this spiritual shit is bullshit is go gone from your head, then you have no business doing that. So you're just looking at the world as it is. And what you see is uh, just not right. And you can, it's not right. Anybody can see it's not right, you know, but uh, there's a way to look at it where what is not right can also be right. And uh, between the not right and right, there's a process and uh, uh, there's a way to see things and be things that will just change. But it's very simple, you know, for my, it's very simple because we have all the resources available over here to do all these things, but it's not being done because of the power dynamics and all the rest of things that is happening over here. So that's, uh, if everybody just becomes very ordinary, very simple, with no, uh, it's very hard to be a simple human being, you know, because you have all your, the need to become special, I need to become somebody else. So once that need is gone to become somebody else, then everybody else will just become like you. You know, they are, everybody's living the same life with the same requirements and the same needs. And to even not uh, have those needs and requirements fulfilled is a, is a great, uh, great suffering, you know. And m the more suffering I see in today's generation is the kids who are working jobs which they don't want to do because they have to have that survival. So even our whole uh, orientation of how survival is and what jobs are, what employment is, uh, it should change. You know, the ec economy is becoming a greater economy anyways. But yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's our responsibility, I guess, obviously, it's our generation, so, I don't know. Damn, bro, this is fresh as fuck. <laughs> uh, instructing the external. So, it just keeps informing each other, and that's, that's what life is, you know? So, uh, uh, mm. so it's kind of like, uh, you know, you don't want to use, um, you know, past, past knowledge or whatever. Mm. Oh, then, but it's not, yeah. I don't want to use it. It's, uh, whenever I would speak to people, I don't have anything to, of me to say. You know, right now I'm speaking because uh, you ask me questions. But if I speak to people, if I speak to somebody else, it's just what they want to talk about. You know, so I have nothing to say in that. So in that moment, for me, the past is not active, anyways. They are bringing in the past, and which I am demolishing all the time, so that they come into the future, uh, into the present. So that's what is happening. It's not that I don't want to use the past. You, know, you can't live without the past. The past is you. If you let, let, let go of the past, then you're dead. So you're just uh, 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 demolishing everything. You're not because uh, uh, I remember you um, mentioning in another chat. It's like you wanted to, like, come up with your own definitions for things or something like that. 
Was that still? Would you say that's relevant or not at the moment? No, no. Uh, yeah, it's not come up with my own definition. It's like the definitions of words. So this is probably what the fuck is what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> It's like I don't know, it's like the way I'm moving, everything I'm doing. I'm like, who the fuck is it? Like, what the fuck is even happening? Anyway, whatever. Uh, <laughs> definitions for things or something like that. Was that like, what am I channeling to, as, to ask that question? No, no. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's not come up with my own definition. It's like the definitions of words. They have to be enacted. They have to be embodied. You know, oh. things like uh, whatever it is. I don't know. Whatever it is. Whoever is using that word is not showing that quality in that. So there's a dichotomy and a difference between the idea of the word and how it is lived in the body or in experience. So there's a split between those two, two things. And when whenever somebody says, may all beings be happy, in that very statement, you're making them unhappy because you're saying that they're not happy, you know? So that's what I'm talking about. The understanding of the word itself is uh, has to change. Not that I want to come up with new definitions, you know? I'm just uh, saying, look at, look at these things differently or not even saying any, anything, you know, whatever it is. So, uh, uh, mm. some people when they uh, do meta, uh, you know, like oh, may all beings be happy. It's like uh, creating like a good feeling in their body, and yeah. then uh, sometimes like the people, you know, it's like uh, the people that they're doing it to, like they start getting happy. Uh, so yeah, it's like yeah. creating this kind of a, a, a state transformation in them. Um, yeah, but it's just a temporary high. Their problems are not because they're not happy momentarily, you know. Everything inside them is totally twisted and of disorderly. So for one moment of high, it does not change anything. And maybe it might help them clear them or whatever it is. But it's their business to fix it, you know. You're only wanting them to be happy because you want to get high too. That's what I can see. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe it's some other purpose. I don't know. Yeah. For me, I for me, all these things uh, seem so unnatural, you know, to make all beings happy. Where do you get that thought from? I have no, none of these thoughts, you know. Where do you come up with these thoughts <laughs> from? What somebody has told you. Somebody has told you any, some of these things. So you're doing them. And practicing them, whatever it is, all these practices. I don't even have any practice, you know. May all beings be happy. Because you're putting an intention to the intention will come to fruition. That's how the world works. So there's nothing special about that. Great. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's going to be this this uh, part of the podcast uh, done. Thanks for coming, Patik. It was really nice. And oh, yeah, okay. Hey. <laughs> okay. Uh, any last words for the for the people watching? Yeah. Uh, last words? No, it's pretty good. Uh, I don't know. I would just, uh, I think, encourage the kids who are super into spirituality to, you know, uh, divert their energy to focus on what the what's happening with the world. Uh, that's what I would, and it, it doesn't have to. Wow. And I guarantee you, it will be the most fruitful uh, change of energy that you will have taken, and it will uh, help you more than harm you, because uh, you will not be isolated and separated from anybody else. Uh, if we're all in it together. That's all I can say. I don't know. Wow, beautiful. Great. Okay. Thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, message Pratik on yeah. Twitter or, or Instagram um, if you want to ask him stuff. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Thanks a lot.